Backyard Green Films is proud to present this episode of Agriculture with your host, Alara Bowman. Alara and her husband, Rick, travel throughout the land in their teardrop trailer that they have nicknamed Maggie, bringing you stories about their travels and the people they meet. They visit farmers, ranchers, and just about anyone who loves putting their hands in the dirt or their feet in stirrups. For the past three years, they have been filming a documentary about heritage breed animals entitled The Holstein Dilemma, Heritage Breeds, and the Need for Biodiversity. In those travels, they have gotten to meet some very interesting people. Here's one of those interviews. Hi, this is Alara, and welcome back to our podcast. It's summertime. Here in San Diego, one of the biggest events that signals the arrival of summer is the fair. As we do nearly every year, last year we went to the San Diego County Fair here in Del Mar. We happened up to the Friends of Farming exhibit in the livestock area, and we had a great chat with a young man working the booth. Since it's fair time again, we thought that the Friends of Farming and the San Diego Farm Bureau would make a great podcast. We sat down with Eric Larson, who is the executive director of the San Diego Farm Bureau, and talked about the surprisingly large ag industry in San Diego. He also explained what his organization does and how the nonprofit organization Friends of Farming works in conjunction with the Farm Bureau to help farmers in San Diego be successful. When San Diego is mentioned, many things come to mind, but the first things that people usually think of are a great climate, lots of sun, beautiful beaches, the San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld, Scripps Institute of Oceanography, the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, Comic-Con, or maybe the Del Mar Racetrack. Tourism is obviously huge. What we usually don't think of right away is agriculture. After doing this interview, I think that maybe we really should. There's nothing like a fresh avocado grown 15 minutes from where I live. And we all have to sacrifice, of course, to support our local agriculture. Pass the guacamole, if you would please. Hi. Okay, if you'd please introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about what you do. Sure. I'm Eric Larson. I'm the executive director of the San Diego County Farm Bureau. So we're a nonprofit organization. There's farm bureaus all across the country, but we focus on what's going on in San Diego County. So anything the farmers can do better as a group than they could do individually, we do it through our organization. So our little, our little um, elevator statement is we're the voice of local farmers. So that's what we do. We're out there helping farmers every day. Oh, now that's a pretty broad statement, helping farmers. So tell me about some of the things that you do. Well, you know, yeah. Number one is we take calls here in our office every day from farmers who have issues. Maybe it's a, a regulatory issue, a compliance issue, a land use issue. Maybe they need some expertise about bees or bugs. They'll call us. We don't necessarily have that expertise, but we know where to direct them. So rather than them having to know all those resources, we'll do that for them. The other thing we do is if we think there is some issues at the state legislature or at the local board of supervisors or even in Washington, D.C. that it's impacting farmers, we'll get engaged. We'll talk to the lawmakers, we'll talk to the regulators and see if we can smooth things out and make things work better for the farmers. Now that's actually a, a really critical part of things because I, at least I know in business, I can run my business but I can't necessarily be the attorney and then I have to look up an attorney or be a bookkeeper and then look up a bookkeeper and so, so to have a resource where you just tell them where to go or give them a, some sort of a, a direction, that's a huge advantage. Yeah, we think so too and so that's why people will join Farm Bureau just so they can get that access and, it's, and, and besides that direction, there's then that farmer to farmer contact we can create as well. And sometimes that's just as important as knowing where to go and who to talk to. Okay. So now you, the, the Farm Bureau, how many of the different Farm Bureaus are there across the country? Is there, there's one main central area and then how many subchapters? So what will happen is it's different in every state. And I can't really speak to all the other states, but there's a state Farm Bureau in every state of California and in Puerto Rico. So there's 51 Farm Bureaus in the United States. In California, our structure is, in addition to the state organization, there's a county Farm Bureau as well. So individuals join their county Farm Bureau. This is where their membership is. Then all the counties come together and each county joins the California Farm Bureau. So we have a county structure here in California. In other states, they may just have a state structure 
because the states may be smaller or the population is less. We're a pretty big state. It'd be hard for a state organization to cover the entire entire area. Well, it makes sense too because if you if you are a political resource or a legal resource, the the rules change from state to state. So it make, does make sense that the states band together. That state to state, of course, and then in California, county to county. There can be very different rules in each county. So it's really good that we have this county presence. Okay, now you're a nonprofit. That's right. We're not the traditional 501c3 that everybody talks about. Agricultural organizations, when farmers get together, are 501c5s, but we are a nonprofit nonetheless. So we file our tax returns as a nonprofit. Uh, our board of directors is a bunch of volunteers. And so we, we looked and act like because we are a nonprofit. Do, do your board of directors, do they have uh, farm experience? Our board of directors are farmers. <laughs> so that takes care of the experience side of it right there. So we can have two types of people on our board of directors. Farmers, and that is the vast majority of our board of directors, but we can also have people who are engaged in the farm business. So um, for instance, American Ag Credit or a fertilizer sales company or a supplier can have a seat on our board of directors as long as their business is in agriculture and they're serving the farmers. A limited number of those folks because it is mostly farmers on our board. San Diego is not one that most people associate with farming and production and yet I was reading the stats on your website. Holy cow, we've got some major crops here. We do a lot here and you're right about San Diego. Everybody's vision of San Diego is the beaches, um, the recreation, the restaurants, the downtown San Diego. Uh, maybe even the traffic on the freeway. So most people have this beach freeway orientation in San Diego. But if you get off the beaten path a little bit, we've got 250,000 acres of farming going on in this county. And it's a, a, almost a $2 billion a year industry. So we rank as one of the largest agricultural counties in the nation. And it says also that you're home to the highest number of certified organic farms of any county in the United States. Yes, we have, oh, oh gosh, I think we're approaching 400 certified organic farms. And so there's a, there's a lot of mindset towards that here. Market driven, of course, because there's a lot of demand for, for organic crops, but it's a growing number of farmers. Okay, so when you think farming in California, you think those big, big farms and ranches up the Central Valley, but San Diego, it says, has the largest number of small farms of anywhere in the nation. Is that still true? That is still true. So what happens in San Diego, we're a real bastion of small family farms. So even though the average size farm in San Diego County is 79 acres, which is actually a pretty small number when you look at the national and the state numbers, if we look at the median size farm in this county, it's only four. So that midpoint on the size of the farms is very, very small. Okay, now that for some reason that just strikes me as an odd thing. Four acres on a farm, what's grown on these small farms that let, let I mean, do, do you have to be a big producer or even have a, a full-time job to be considered a small farm in San Diego as far as the Farm Bureau is concerned? We do have a lot of part-time farmers, people that may do other things, but the real thing that makes San Diego different than most other farming regions, we're not growing grains, we're not growing hay, we're not growing soy, we're not doing corn, we're not doing those things are, that are the fairly low value crops. Everything we do here is fairly high value. So our number one crop that we produce here is nursery plants. Number two, so we all the nursery things, and then after that we have avocados and citrus and cut flowers, crops like that. So they produce a lot per acre. So they require a lot of hand labor, a lot of attention to the crop. So consequently, whether you're full-time or part-time, our farms tend not to be very large. Now, is that, is that mostly for internal use? Because, I, now the nursery farms, that made perfect sense to me because we're what, the fifth largest, fifth or eighth? Are we fifth largest city in the country? I think we're in the, I th we're in the top 10, maybe we're seven or eight. Seven or eight, okay. Yeah. So I could see nursery plants because a lot of people have, unfortunately they have beautiful yards out mm -hmm. here, which means that our water is being yeah. used for that kind of thing, so. Um, but but is, is most of what we produce, does it remain in San Diego County or is it exported? Most of what we produce in San Diego County leaves San Diego County. And let me talk about the, the, the two biggies. Number one is nursery. 
So we produce a lot more nursery plants than we can use here. So we are the largest nursery producing county in the nation, which means we have trucks leaving here every day, going to Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, Texas, delivering nursery plants grown in San Diego and then all across California as well. And then we look at the next big crop, which is avocados. We're the largest avocado growing county in the United States. Thank also. goodness for that. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's more avocados than we can consume here ourselves. So even though we eat a lot of avocados in San Diego County, the mid most of what we produce here, we ship out of the region. So the things that we produce here that pretty much stay here, it's probably going to be the miscellaneous vegetables we grow that find their way into farmers markets or find themselves in some of the regional chain stores. Okay, so now I'm a, I'm a hobby gardener at mm -hmm. my, my little teeny house plot, but now some other things are making a little bit more sense to me because when we buy wood, they sell avocado wood for firewood uh, here. When we buy uh, mushroom compost that's available here, well, this, those are two things on the list, avocado, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, eggs, mushrooms, and grapefruit. Mushrooms, you never think of that, but that's not as space intensive, I would assume, as something else might be. Yeah, mushrooms are extremely intensive agriculture. They tend to be grown inside what looks like a, a tilt-up concrete building because they have to have complete control of the atmosphere inside. So not even a greenhouse gives you that kind of atmospheric control. So they're actually inside structures. But we do have several mushroom farms here in San Diego County. Now we have a climate that's, that's well known to be a little bit more temperate than other places. How does that help our agriculture? Well, the main thing it does is we don't have much in the way of seasons. So if you want to grow a crop here, you can grow it 12 months a year. If you want to grow a subtropical crop like avocados, you can grow it here because we have plenty of places where it doesn't freeze and they couldn't handle freezing. But mostly for our nursery industry, they can produce those crops 12 months a year. There's never a season they take off. So they can hit all the holidays. They can hit all the landscaping demands and needs across the, the Southwest because we have this great weather. Yeah, most, most people that are not in farming, they, they really just don't understand that there might be a three month or four month window and that's all you get to grow. Mm -hmm. So San Diego is very different that way. Now, do our local, do our small farming people, our gardeners and things like that, is it really one of those things where you don't even have to worry about seasons or uh, maybe kale in the fall, but you can grow year round? How, how does that work? Yeah, well, you do have to grow year round. And so if you really know how to manipulate it, and if you get like early, middle and late season varieties of things, you'll do your, you can do that. But you know, we do grow seasonal things here, you know, strawberries, blueberries, things like that have a very distinct season. And so we, we can't manipulate nature. And a lot of that is driven by temperature and day length, but nonetheless, but for our vegetable producers, they can be doing seed work and growing just about everything they want all year round. That's just amazing. So how, how, uh, how is the, the shortage of water? Now this year we've had a good year, last year we had a good year but it was not headed that direction prior to that. How have seasonal changes and uh, overall climate changes impact growing in San Diego? The water question is very interesting in San Diego in that our issue hasn't been supply. Um, we have a very diversified portfolio of water here in San Diego County simply because we never had any. So we've really gone out and searched the West and found sources. So we bring water here from the Colorado River, we bring water here from Northern California. We've recently built a desalination plant here in Carlsbad producing 50 million gallons of water a day. So we really don't have a terrible issue with supply. For the farm community, our problem is price. Because all those things we've done to bring water at great distance and create a secure water supply has come at great cost because it's driven by the urban community. The urban community wants security. They want to make sure there's always water. They don't want to worry about it. And we've created that supply here. Our farmers are hooked up into the same water system. So, and there's no break in price. So as that price has gone up to create security in San Diego, it has raised that price for our farmers. Now, where the climate change part comes in for us is that if we have warmer winters and hotter summers, the farmers are gonna to have to use more of that expensive irrigation water. That's the problem we see for our farmers today and moving forward as we get warmer, they're gonna to have to buy more water. 
did San Diego always start with the same amount of water? Or do you know if, if when we did start moving water across the state, if agriculture changed in California, in Southern California? In, in San Diego, it certainly did. So a quick little history of the water in San Diego County. Um, by the late 1800s, early you know, 1900s, we had dammed up every river in San Diego County. And that was enough water for a population of about 250,000 people, plus a moderate number of farms. That's all we had capacity for of water that was produced here. World War II comes along and San Diego County becomes this burgeoning military place with the Navy and the Marine Corps. And so the population started to grow and grow and grow very quickly. By order of the president and the order of the secretary of the Navy, San Diego County was hooked up to the Colorado River. And water started coming to San Diego County from the Colorado River in 1947, post-World War II, because we were still having military buildup here and a lot of defense contractors were here. And so there was not going to be enough water to sustain that industry or the population. So we started doing that. Fast forward then to the mid-70s, the amount of water coming from the Colorado River was not sustaining San Diego again. And that's when we hooked up to Northern California and built an aqueduct into Southern California from the Sacramento Delta. So in the mid-1970s, that second aqueduct was brought into San Diego to give us that blend of Colorado River and Northern California water. From the ag community standpoint, once we had those um, imported water supplies, we could then start planting crops in what was then remote places like Valley Center, Bonsall, Fallbrook, where we did dry land farming before or limited irrigation based on water in our local rivers. And so there, there was um, a big increase, particularly in the tree crops citrus and avocados, the permanent crops grown in San Diego. I did not know that. That is really interesting. Wow. That changed the population. The population changes in response to that because now there's water, more water. We can grow more food. Mm -hmm. So, oh, now we can have more people. Yeah, that's right. So I would think that the water is reflexive in that way too. More water, now we can have more people. Yeah, very much so. And that's worldwide. So now we've created these manufactured water systems all around the world where we can move water the best place to grow crops, San Joaquin Valley in California is a great example. A great place to grow crops, but they didn't have any water. We then come in as Californians and create a manufactured water system and capture water in places like Lake Shasta, build Lake Shasta, build Lake Oroville, and start bringing these water to these, this ground, and it becomes very fertile ground and becomes the largest agricultural production area in the country. That's just amazing. Because that water system was installed. The economics of this, of agriculture in California and San Diego, it's well worth maintaining as uh, us in a, as, a, as productive a realm as we can be. I mean, I'm reading here, it says, we're the fifth largest industry in San Diego County is, is, is agriculture? Correct, yes. Five billion dollar impact to the local yes. community? Yes, uh-huh. So it's not a soft, touchy thing, it's this is money. <laughs> this, this is real, it's a big part of the economy. And if you look at agriculture, if you look at San Diego's a big county, but if you look at the county, most of our agriculture is in North County, so it's really centered here, so it is an important part. So if you look at the entire county, maybe it's not a huge number when you look at the $5 billion as part of the economy. I mean, $5 billion is a big number, but I mean for the whole economy of San Diego County. But if you centralize it just in North County in communities like Valley Center and Fallbrook, it's huge. And those communities are very, very dependent on those jobs and that income that's brought in by agriculture. Now tell me about carbon sequestration and what crops and agriculture do for our, our environment and, our, and the ability to have a nice big fat carbon sink here. Yeah, so we, you know, we talk about greenhouse gas emissions now a lot as a country. I mean, it gets political, but nonetheless, there is a reality that people are discussing about how do we reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emissions but also the carbon already in the air, how can we pull it out of the air? Well, number one right at the top is plants create photosynthesis and they pull that CO2 out of the air and it can go into the plant and get into the soil. So we, we like to say just by having plants here in San Diego County and the permanent crops, the four million agricultural trees we have here, they're doing a big job helping us to sequester that carbon. The other thing, big role that farming can play 
we create a lot of organic waste in our urban communities. And that organic waste comes from our yard trimmings. And people are filling up cans and cans of that every day. And organic waste also comes from the food waste and from restaurants. If we can compost those and not put them into the landfill where they'll eventually emit methane, which is another greenhouse gas, if we can compost those materials and put them onto the farms and put it into the ground, then we've put a lot more carbon into the ground and kept it from becoming a, a potential emission. So farms can play a really big role, especially in a county like San Diego, where we've got an urban population and a farm community. They can work hand in hand on uh, carbon sequestration and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And I just have to say on a personal note, the little farmers can do that too, because on my little land, I've got a, we have a hundred gallon stock tank and I have mm -hmm. a worm bin out there and I, when we're faithful about putting everything in there, it just kind of disappears. And once a month, I put out a trash can. Maybe. Yeah. And so that, that's important. So we need to do everything we can on a personal level, but also we're going to need help and to overcome things like the amount of transportation we have, you know, the emissions from transportation or from energy production. And the farms can, the commercial farms can be a big play in, in making that work for everybody. Okay, so now to go back to the, the Friends of Farming a little bit. Sure. Tell me why there are these two different branches of the organization, the Farm Bureau and the Friends of Farming. Well, we, we do strategic planning here at Farm Bureau, and several years ago we go, gee, part of what we do here is we need to be educating the community about agriculture. Let's go back, you and I, we started our conversation. It's not only the tourists, but the people who live in San Diego County don't necessarily know we have agriculture here. So we're trying to think, how can we do this? And our decision was, gee, we need to get people out onto the farms. And so we created this organization called Friends of Farming. And we're still continuing to invent it and try to make it work. But what we do, an individual joins San Diego County Friends of Farming that we operate here out of the Farm Bureau office. And from that, they then can take tours on local farms. So we open up farms on six to maybe eight Saturdays a year where there's a farm that will be a location that's open and the members of the Friends of Farming go out to the farm and they actually get a tour of the farm from the farmer themselves. So the farmer, the, the man or the woman that's the farmer there conducts the tour. And so we've been to wineries, we've been to flower farms, we've been to nurseries. Um, we've been to avocado groves, orange groves, we've been to dairies. We, it's a, the whole variety of agriculture we have here, we open it up to the friends of farming. I was just, I have the list here and it's, I, some of them are actually a little surprising, but it does make perfect sense to me. The Carlsbad flower fields, I've, I've yes. known about that forever. That's a farm, I don't really think of it as such, well, but it is. It, and that's a really good point. And so people see this, this beautiful array of flowers. The tour we gave our members was as a farm. So the farmer said, here's how we plant the seeds, here's how we nourish the seeds, here's how the plants grow up, here's how we sell the flowers, here's how we sell the bulbs. So it was the whole farming side of it. It wasn't just the, oh, it's pretty and take a picture. They really got to know what makes those flower fields work as a farm. And it's also agro-tourism because boy, do the people come flocking to Carlsbad when the flower fields are out every year. And they don't seem to mind to pay to get in. <laughs> <laughs> So if, if I notice that on your list of tours, there's a couple of different dinners that you have. Mm -hmm. And tell me how you um, kind of get the, get the restaurant tours involved in the farming, uh, in your goals for the farming uh, bureaus. We, we do. We want, we want the restaurants to recognize local agriculture. And to that, we've created a brand. We call it San Diego Grown 365, where we're trying to promote locally grown. We ourselves put on a couple of dinner events for Farm Bureau and we invite restaurateurs, but we also invite the public. One is our annual farm, the San Diego Grown Dinner that we put on, which is a really big event. We also do an event, we did our first one this year called Graze. You know, we did Graze at the field, so it was at the flower field. So we had local foods for people to come and graze and, and enjoy these locally prepared foods um, at that event. That must but have been really fun. It that was fun. Really and for an initial event, it was hugely successful. And we're going to do it again. It's going to get, we think it's going to be really big and become a signature San Diego County event. But back to the restaurants, and it is interesting. We haven't fully made that connection between our farmers in San Diego County and the restaurants here. And part of that is connecting them up 
and, and how can we do it? It's very, very easy if you run a restaurant to come in the morning, look at your inventory of, of fruits and vegetables, get on the phone and a truck rolls up and everything's there for you, regardless of where it comes from. So it's coming from Mexico and Yuma and Northern California very easily. And so what we want to do, we, we need a system or we need a communication where those folks who want those products will say, for, oh, what's available local? Let's work our menu around what's local. Because we have a lot of capacity here to produce more. We could produce a lot more products here if there is more demand. So we got 3 million people in San Diego County. And I don't know how many million tourists we have a year, but it's a lot. They're already here. So we don't have to go looking for the customers. They're already here. How do we make those connections? And it's important. We haven't found the magic formula to that yet, but it's really going to depend on the restaurant. The first, the customers demand that the restaurants do it. And then the restaurants take going that extra mile to make contact with the farmers to bring that locally grown produce into their restaurant. So um, tell me a little bit about how, how your organization tries to bring the animal part in as well. Yeah, so we have limited animal agriculture in San Diego County, and, and there are two components are the, ma are the major ones. Num number one is eggs. We produce a lot of eggs, not, not birds for consumption. We're not producing fryers for the meat business, but we've got a lot of hens here, and the millions of hens producing eggs, and we produce a lot of eggs in San Diego County. And you can buy those locally. If you go into, you're not necessarily going to find it in the chain stores, but if you go into some of the regional markets, we have several egg producers that are supplying those regional markets. And you can go in there and you can easily find uh, eggs from Valley Center, eggs from Lakeside and places like that. Ramona produced here in, in San Diego County. So eggs is number one. Number two then is cow-calf, what we call cow-calf operations. So we have 200,000 acres of grazing land, but we don't have green pasture or green grazing land all year because our lack of rainfall. So our model for beef production here is mostly cow-calf. So the, the, the beef farmers have a herd of cows they maintain. They breed them each year, they drop their calves, and then the calves are sold off and go to feedlots or other parts of the state, maybe to other places that have sufficient grazing land before they're to a mature size. Uh, plus we have no facilities to process beef in San Diego County. So that cow-calf is a very important thing that we, that we do here. Third would be dairy. That's very limited. We're down to three dairies in the county from a high of 150 in the 1950s, but we're down to three dairies now. Those dairies continue to survive because they've looked at other ways to augment their income, either through direct sales to the public, um, ag tourism, or doing other compatible businesses at the site of their dairy. Because it's very, very difficult. The dairy business now depends on massive herd sizes. And we just don't have that land capacity here. And again, we don't have much in the way of processing here. So, um, our animal agriculture is limited. That's ironic. I, I, most people don't remember Mission Valley. We used to go through uh, Mission Valley or Fashion Valley and the whole thing was dairy. For dairy, 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 dairy. Uh, the mayor of San Diego in the 1940s was a dairyman from Mission Valley. And so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a time pass. But agriculture does change over time and San Diego's not immune to that. So things that were a big crop in the past might not be now and we might not even know what's going to be the big crop in the future. We have some inklings of what they might be, but we don't really know. Okay, so to go back to your friends of farming, I noticed that you have the benefits of being a friend on here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, tell me about the Edible San Diego magazine and some of the things that you get when you join. Well, if people don't know, there's a great magazine out there called Edible San Diego that really focuses on the local food scene. Uh, it talks about local chefs, it talks about recipes, it talks about local farms. It's a great magazine. Um, and if you join Friends of Farming, you get that delivered to your home for free. It's part of the membership. And so that's a great benefit. We also send out electronic newsletters to the Friends of Farming. We'll have gardening tips in there and we'll give them information about local farming, just kind of keep them informed about what's going on. And then we also have talked about the tours as well. So we think for all of that, we think it's a um, 
a pretty safe investment of a mere $29 a year <laughs> to and, be a friend of farming. And it helps the food security in San Diego. I mean, I think that that's a great thing. That's a really important thing. Well, we think it builds advocates for the local farm scene, people who might not have known that we have agriculture here. And we always want advocates. We want people who are out there supporting the farmers and saying a good word about local farming. Now, I'm just going to read this little section here from the San Diego Farm Bureau website. Um, as to the ranking in the nation of these different mm -hmm. crops, yes. and boy, is this, uh, this is just an education for me. It says, in the nation ranking, we are n the number one producer of nursery crops, mm -hmm. number one in part-time farmers, yay, <laughs> number one in avocado production, number two in acres of guavas, pomegranates, limes, and macadamias. Macadamias, I mm -hmm. think that. Number two in farms with women as principal operator. Wow, yeah. we're progressive. A lot of, <laughs> lot, lot of women farmers, no doubt about it. Well, you know, the, one, the interesting thing in our documentary that we found is, is that 50% or so of the people that we speak with are women. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one of the last frontiers where you are just based on production and competency, and you can do what you want as a Absolutely, and you're you're independent. You're you're you are the operator of that business, and gender has nothing to do with it. Isn't that Absolutely beautiful thing? Absolutely nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah, um, you are number two in farms with women as, as a principal operator. Or number five in lemons. Yes. Lemons. We're great. Lemons love it near the cap near, near the Pacific Ocean. Yes. So we produce a lot of lemons here. They like that temperate climate. Number nine in the nation in strawberries. And number ten in egg laying hens. Mm -hmm. That's, I never would have big guessed numbers, that. big yes, numbers, big numbers, right are. here, right here in San Diego. Right here in San Diego. I think that's a, I think it's a fantastic thing. Okay, so specifically, when you say support your local farmer, in terms of the economics, if you buy from the farmer, does that help them? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Anytime you can, the closer you can get to the farmer with your food dollar, the more money that farmer gets to keep. So number one, if you want to support local farmers, get in the habit of going to a farmer's market. Get in the habit of buying from a local retailer who's, who carries local produce. You may pay a little bit more. Let's just accept the fact. You may pay a little bit more at a farmer's market. You may pay a little bit more at one of those. But then when you do that, you're not buying from the mega farms someplace. You're buying from a local family farm in San Diego County. Yeah, what's that worth? Yeah, what's that worth? It's worth a lot yeah, to all of us. So How do I find a CSA or a farmer's market? Well, you know, if you go to the San Diego County Farm Bureau web page, and all you have to do is Google, go search in San Diego County Farm Bureau or San Diego Farm Bureau, you get to our website, and we've got a drop-down menu that says Buy Local. It tells you where every farmer's market is, what their hours are, the name of the manager if you want to give them a call, and it also lists all the CSAs that are available. So you can call those and maybe get a subscription to a CSA. Community-supported, agriculture. We didn't talk about that, but that's a good way to support local farmers. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was fun. This I enjoyed it. This is beautiful. If you liked our podcast, please subscribe. This is how we keep going. And please tell your friends to join us. Please feel free to post any questions or comments that you might have to our social media sites. Our Twitter feed is at Backyard Green Films, spelled B-K-Y-R-D-G-R-E-E-N-F-I-L-M-S. Our Instagram is at Backyard Green Films, B-A-C-K-Y-A-R-D-G-R-E-E-N-F-I-L-M-S. Our Facebook is Backyard Green Films. Our YouTube URL is youtube.com backyard green tv we want to thank eric larson for speaking with us today if you'd like more information about the san diego farm bureau or friends of farming please visit their websites at sdfarmbureau.org and friendsoffarming.com You have been listening to Agriculture with your host, Alara Bowman. Please tune in for more upcoming episodes from our travels. We'd also like to thank our producer, Michelle Council. 
I'm Rick Bowman, your behind-the-scenes editor. Until next time. This has been a presentation of Backyard Green Films Productions, all rights reserved, copyright 2019.